Hey everybody, player Chaos here once more with Let's Play Victoria 2 as the French. <coughs> so, that's a great way to start off that with a good cough. Anyway, so this is the last of the post commentary episodes. I actually, in the near the end of this, I figure out what's gone wrong. And you'll see, it's actually, yeah, one of those things. But yeah, now we're getting stuck into it once more. Uh, Poland Lithuania is being a brave little git. <laughs> I'll give him that. Yeah, we're just like. I think at this point I'm just showing off that the U we're at war, but the USA hasn't even mobilized. That's how little. That's how few dams they give about this. So, yeah, we're never going to see the USA. Ever. Unless we declare war on them, in which case, you know, we'll see it more than a time. <laughs> which is kind of insane in itself. But regardless, that's why you don't ally with the USA if you're a European power. They never help. I think I was the guy who played the USA and helped out. I played USA wrong. <laughs> I should have been at war with every European power trying to destroy Europe. <laughs> nah, honestly, I think that would have been fun. Maybe you should do that one time. Hmm. Potential campaign, thought of. Yeah, but, um, yeah, calling in the Reliance because. Polish. Polish Lithuania. Poland Lithuania, was that? I don't know. And Persia's gone bankrupt. Because, you know, Persia. To be fair, I'm surprised Persia still exists at this point. Oh look! To uh what's that Tuscany? Hestortmand. We're at war with Prussia, and they thought it'd be better to come and siege us rather than unsiege Prussia. That's not very wise. And yes, yeah, a battle against Russia, because a battle against Russia. Just send more ships in because I don't want to take too many casualties. That's not very up. And the occupation is done, that battle events ended, they weren't wiped, but they still took over half their casualties. Watch this, by the way. They are retreating into our land. They have perfectly good land behind them, but they're retreating towards us. Why? I mean, don't get me wrong, I <clears throat> I can see some of the logic, but, you know, why are they retreating towards us? Surely they should go towards the one that's closest to them. Actually, the one closest to them is us again, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, that makes more sense. I kind of feel sorry for the Wehrmacht Republic. But it's not in the Wehrmacht right now, is it? Hmm. And, um, actually, <clears throat> so amusing. Wurttemberg's the war leader. <laughs> Russia is not the war leader in this war. Wurttemberg is. We get all the war we got all this war score against Russia. It's not going to make a difference. We need to go siege Wurttemberg. Wurttemberg is there. They are five provinces. So guess who we're gonna siege? <laughs> and yeah, I think I broke down laughing at this point. Just figuring it out. Of all the people though, Wurttemberg ain't... Don't get me wrong, I get the idea. Prussia is meant to be this... You, you do kind of... Sorry, let me try again. You do let the major power lead the way, the stronger of the two. Because they're meant to know what they're doing. Note I said meant. <laughs> But, in cases like this, I think Prussia would be the better military leader. Also, social reforms. Yay! And, I think I go with medical care with this. Yeah, medical. No, oh, school system, sorry. They know what they want, at least. <clears throat> there is one way I go with medical care, because I've had enough of losing population every time there's a flu epidemic. <laughs> yeah, we have flu! Suddenly lose thousands of your population without any growth. Yeah. I don't even know why we're taking loans right now. I think it's the Navy. So, yeah, steam is still costing a crap ton. Artillery isn't exactly cheap, but it's on its own. Yeah, we need um. At some point, I'm going to build a steam and shipyards and probably a artillery place. Because we're paying way too much. And we're not getting enough out of them. I know I'm in a naval war and I shouldn't really lower the spending on the military, but. Yeah. If we don't really need a navy, I mean, we outmatch Rus the Russians anyway. I very much doubt they have commerce. Well, they have access to commerce areas. I doubt they have the fleet for them. I want naval bases in the area for them. There we go. We're there. It's going to hurt our economy for a bit, but we can make up for it. But yeah, back to Sweden, shall we? So this war is going to be amusing on its own. <clears throat> Sweden won't peace out until Russia pieces out. 
Now, Russia's in a war with us. Uh, we got the papacy helping us out, sweet. <laughs> Wait, was that. Were those sailboats? Clippers? Whatever you want to call them? Also, yes, the Siege of Prussia. The Siege of Württemberg, sorry. We're not going to take too long with Württemberg. There's not a lot they can really do. The Viticultural Association. So, Viticultural Association is <coughs> basically they want to. Um, preserve the traditions of alcohol, basically. They're about drinking, and it's... It's not bad, don't get me wrong. It's a nice idea. It means, like, bars, pubs, that kind of thing. Yes, pubs, taverns. Um, this era, it would be... There wasn't clubs yet, because not that type of music yet. So, yeah, it's... You either lose farming efficiency and mining efficiency, but you lose pop militancy. Or you just gain pop militancy and you liberals. Yeah, I'm. <coughs> There's something later on where you'll see that card kicks me in the can. Because, you know, a liberal with high militancy becomes narco liberal. You'll see how that plays into it. How it comes to effect soon. I'm also amused we're in two wars at once and we're winning both. I, I, I don't like doing more than one war at the same time. It just. It doesn't feel right. Cause you, I like focusing my troops. Really, Württemberg? You thought that was the wisest move? What well, to be fair, he is actually kicking our tail. Machine guns! Okay. <clears throat> now, this is where I'm actually getting ready for Colonial Race. Because now we've got machine guns. I doubt anyone else has them. So we've got a base 25% chance of finding machine guns. This is where you make or break your country. Will it last until a new era? Will it be a major power? It relies upon how you colonise and how you control Africa. There we go, colonial negotiations. We got it in the first month or so. So, <clears throat> you can't um, you can't settle through your puppets. You have to puppet. You have to you have to establish places within sections next to your land or within your colonial range. Africa has the most manpower, whereas the Pacific has. I believe the easy to tame land. You can get tons out of it. And it is probably more worth your while to go Africa, just because of the size you get and the manpower. Hell, hell having a contiguous uh, border within Africa of your nation, then you can summon tons of troops. It's worth it. Um, there's two strategies you can pull off. One, you, <coughs> you focus on what you want and keep your colonial points high. That means keeping good navy, keep going that way, keep upgrading your naval base as you go along. Or you settle, the, you settle the coast first, get everywhere pinned off, and then you work on keeping the other powers che in check. You like uh, this is actually where Britain's going to suffer because they have they've lost just about all their navy twice now. Russia isn't going to be able to colonize. Prussia can't. Austria hasn't really got anything useful. Spain and Portugal are really the, the colonizers of this, aside from me, of course. Of the great powers, of course. Will they peace out? Not yet. And I'll keep them in for me because there's stuff coming up. So machine guns are really, really useful. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow, my, my guys are brave. Wow. Sitting at Britain now. <laughs> okay, I think Britain's hosed. Because that, that does factor in. <laughs> Ah, uh, poor Britain. Every single war it's been in uh, has me involved in some way. Has it getting sieged up by someone? It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm making a loss. Um, the thing is, I need to lower the military spending. And I don't want to as I'm in the middle of a war. This is going to take a while to piece out. Do you know what I mean? We need to either siege Russia, or we need to siege enough of uh, Sweden that the ticking war score and the battles end up in our favour. Right now, the ticking war score is in our favour, we just haven't won the 50% of the battles. And it only goes up to 50% from battles. I love how the Württemberg will take white peace, by the way. <clears throat> you know, this great power trying to defend Prussia will take white peace. It's sort of amusing. <laughs> I love how low my militancy is right now, by the way. Well, it's about four, but four is about the point where um, 
rebellions can happen, but they're going to be relatively minor. You see, it kind of scales. Um, four is the point where rebels start organising, and the higher it goes, the bigger the rebellion's going to be. And I messed up, because I ended the siege. Now we've got to do it all over again. Yay! Ugh. The good news is, this is pretty much all over, but the but the yelling. But the yelling? This this battle is all, this war is all over, save for the crying. That's better, that sounds a lot better. <clears throat> so, we're not entirely out of the woods, because Russia's still out of borders. We can actually leave Dunkirk. The only reason that's there is to check the Russian stack. Sardinia Piedmont, the Pope, and Portugal are sieging at Britain for me. Why is with the Italians in this? They seem to do this every single time. They seem to be my badasses. <clears throat> and they've got Poland and Lithuania who's making himself busy. I have no colonial points against waiting for more navy. <clears throat> what I should be doing, by the way, is looking for naval bases to upgrade. I know it costs a lot to upgrade them, but getting them upgraded is going to be the key. Because then you can field the bigger navy. Uh, your navy gives you more colonial points. And colonial points are what keep you going in this. And I forget what the values are. <clears throat> Excuse me a second. So I, there's, I know different ships have different very, have different levels of colonial power depending on what they have. Because I think there's some theory where commerce rate is actually the best. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so every nation starts with a base of 100 from the technology post Nasonian fort listed as for improved technology. Wish they'd actually tell you that. Every naval base gives you 30. Every additional level on naval base gives you 20. So level 2 gives you 50, blah blah blah. Every combat ship gives you some colonial power. Transports don't. Frigates give you 2, which is the smallest. Man of Wars give you 5. Commerce Raiders give you 8. Mice give you 10. Ironclads 12. Battleships 15, Cruisers 16, Dreadnoughts 22. It's... <coughs> um, the thing is, with that, it's actually... If you go in Colonial, which... Why would you be going at that point? Ironclads are better for Colonial points. Um, and Cruisers... Well, in the Cruiser Battleship Age, you wouldn't really be looking for Colonial power. You'd be looking for a big fleet. So, you'd probably be going, like, more... Battleship Heavy? Or Battleship Cruisers? Dreadnoughts are, well, they cost 50 per power each, and they give you 22. That's, no, that's not a fair trade. <clears throat> I mean, battleships cost 30, cruisers cost 20. Yeah, so you'd be looking, you really do want to spam, like, ironclads. Ironclads monitors. <coughs> I mean, hell, like, ironclads cost 3, and they provide you with 12. That's, that's effectively 4, of, that's 4 times what you're paying for it. But then battle, uh, dreadnoughts give you no sorry battleships take fifty and give you fifteen. That's not a fair trade. So it's better going with ironclads, I guess. <coughs> well now I know. <coughs> Someone's actually oh <coughs> suffrage suffrage movement. Basically, you want more liberals. Well, sorry, liberals are conservatives, I believe. No, sorry, it's. Conservatives or reactionaries. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I love this. Someone's actually worked out if you've got 300 uh, naval support points. 300, uh, yeah, we're getting a lot of suffrages. I don't know why. Probably our military is just that high. I don't know. But someone's worked out that um, going up to ironclads, getting the 300 naval support points, which is you know what you need for your navy. 300 frigates give you 600 CP. 150 Man of Wars give you 750. 100 Commerce Raiders gives you 800. 100 Monitors gives you 1,000. 100 Ironclads give you, to give you 1,200, which is probably the highest. 15 Cruisers, 250. 6 Battleships, 90. 5 Dreadnoughts, 110. <clears throat> so yeah, you do want to be building as many Ironclads as you can. I build Monitors just because I need the screens more than anything. <coughs> <laughs> so 
times reading the stuff now, because it's interesting. And that was one more done. So now the problem for me is expanded again. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so apparently someone's got a theory where Britain doesn't upgrade its navy because they're trying to save CP. But, you know, they, they keep ironclads around because they want to take as many as they can. But they don't know the age of colonialism has ended, which sounds a bit ridiculous. But, hey, could be worse. It makes sense, I guess. I mean, you know, it's, you're trying to colonize stuff when the colonial race comes up. You need ironclads, but they don't know that to get rid of their fleet. They make a small penalty now. Make a small, um, well, for Britain, it is a small penalty, actually. Uh, to get take a small uh, bit of pain now, you're better off in future. <clears throat> also, two sisters, what are you doing? <laughs> They're brazen bastards. <laughs> Oh god, two sisters, you're amazing! <laughs> so, we're still sieging up Sweden, because it's Sweden. Tensions in Greece. Uh, I don't really care about Greece, so I don't really want to care about the influence there. I take the prestige hit, we've got tons anyway. We're not going to fall in second place in the world anytime soon. <laughs> He's taking a minus three before we count for anything else. Oh, and he rolls a nine. Typical. Good thing got reinforcements inbound. Yeah, that's where the fun begins. Hello. Uh, we've got rebels in some place. Yeah. It's not like it matters at this point. <clears throat> Battle Dunkirk in another favor. Yeah, and then I'm just looking at... Okay, because the price seems to be expensive. Who's making the most? We're making 61% of the world's steamers. Okay, how many steamers? Um, I think... Yeah, we try to keep the stockpile because, yeah, we... We need as many ships as we can get. I think uh, I hover over at some point, and okay. I just need to explain that. Poland and Lithuania tried to call us into a war against Krakow. The problem is, Russia answered the call from Krakow first. Me and Russia have a truce, we cannot go to war with each other, so I cannot support Poland and Lithuania. If it were Austria, that's a different story. So now I'm having to watch Poland and Lithuania get massacred. Yeah, about that. <laughs> Actually, I'm already at war with Russia. Well, we don't have a choice, we're already at war. I can go and help them out if I want to, but that would mean going down there, unseizing their stuff. We get a CB on the UK, I don't really care. I mean, it's it's, in, it's slaughter shown there, I'll take a prestige in my relations. Because I think I'm going to be the centre point of many a war. Also, randomly Austria. I think I'm going to have... Okay, how did Austria get through my land in the first place? I don't remember giving them access. I must have given them access at some point. Yeah, it's them. Bloody. Give me the thing. Git. Up now is being seized by the Russians. I want to siege. Falcon denies. I can't actually remember how much it took to get the peace deal. Because I think we are over halfway. I just can't remember. Also, I stuck, I stuck home. Sphearsland. Sphearsland. <laughs> I think we need to... Well, I've been very peaceful this game. What's wrong with me? <laughs> I've been sat there in the background like, yeah, we'll just take a break, let you come to us, and then we'll not conquer China for once. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. And... What? He attacked into a larger stack. When I have machine guns, and I'm dug in. Yeah, you're about to deserve that. <laughs> and let's pull one back, because this is just going to be a defense force, really. Couldn't, I don't really care about expanding over there. Although I could, like... No, there's not enough war score to do it. Just because I could piece out Russia with some extra land, but... Yeah. Oh, and yeah, I'm looking over in Africa because um, Africa Pacific, um, because there are so there's some land colonies over here. It is decent. The Americans general, the Americans and Japanese, as the Japanese and Western tend to um, colonize over there, but they don't really tend. They don't go outside the Pacific. I mean, when I took the Americans into Africa, that was a rarity. 
mean, the Americans, when they are in control, you know, they're an AI, they don't go in the Africa. Af in the Africa. Hmm. It's kind of a bit annoying, really. I mean, it gives me, it makes me want to think, like, I know Liberia was a thing, and it still is today, but I kind of want to see them remove Liberia and give us, um, give us American land down there. <laughs> History of Liberia, by the way, uh, it's actually a, I believe you'll find it's a, sl it's a nation that's started by, by actual American colonists, who went back and went, hey, let's go and colonize over here, it's gonna be fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> In fact, it shouldn't. Yeah, what? The Republic of Liberia was set was who began as a settlement of the American Colonization Society. Okay, in and it declared its independence July 26, 1847. It didn't recognize its independence until after the American Civil War. Hmm. It's where loads of um, f Black Americans, Afro Caribbeans, that kind of thing went to. So, they still went there from America. I mean, they actually have modeled the flag after the United States, if you've seen the flag. So, you know, uh, I actually, they've got a really decent motto. The love of liberty brought us here. It's kind of it's sweet, actually. Liberia is the only country to have, self, uh, to have given itself independence without gaining it through revolt from any other nation. And it's the oldest of there. Yeah. <laughs> kind of weird. I don't know. It's actually a big as a hellhole these days. Yeah, it's been it suffered for Ebola. It's been hit by civil war. It's it's a sad story, really. It was a, it was a success story, and then well, sad but true. It's on the pep it's on the grain coast, okay. There we go, so research is done on business banks, that's gonna help us out a bit. Place in the sun. Okay, so this one is do you want six prestige? I think it's six prestige, it might be eight, I don't know. <clears throat> or do you want to knock all of the major powers all the other major powers down by one? Which is a fair trade actually, when you think about it. Like you could it's potentially you could knock them out of the top eight. <clears throat> I say potentially as I'm not entirely sure. If you're in one of the lower ranks, you can extend your lead. Okay, it's 5.5. .5. Really? 5.5 .5 or knock them all down by one. It's kind of a better trade to knock them down. But the thing is, in most cases, it kind of works out better if you do it for you. You extend your lead as opposed to knock them down more. It's going to be harder to knock you out the top place. We're still going to be top dog regardless, but hey. And Russia wants peace. Deal. We got Gotland for Denmark. I don't even know why they went there. That's the thing. I mean, it kind of makes sense, but <laughs> I'm actually immediately confused. But yeah, it's a bit long And Austria is in our land. I don't know why, but the length of time they sit there actually causes issue. You'll see why later. And it's kind of annoying when it comes up. And we can get our fleets back home, we can start making money again. Let's go home, lads. So, that's a successful war and a half. I'm trying to find a transport fleet. Fingers to free. Not entirely sure on this one. Let's keep going. And, okay, we're making money now. Everyone's demobilized. Let's get this loan repaid. Uh, right, I need to fix the economy. Spain wants alliance? Sure. I think it's still a secondary power, I believe. I mean, wait, well, I, the best bit is, despite going to war with them, I can still ally Russia right now. That's the best bit. That's how good our relations are. And yes, I am just, you know, doing this because paying off loans is important to me. It actually does help our national bank. I believe, does it? Uh, 71.72k. If yeah, I can click it. Yep, actually puts our bank up. And we can now make our protectorates. Have you noticed something? Hi, Piedmont. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> they are in our sphere, but they can still colonize. The only two types of powers can colonize. Secondary or great. Civilized nations cannot. Um, if it come, if you step in too long in a colonial uh, race, in a colonial, I uh, can't remember what the term is. If two powers are settling an area, and they spend too long, you know, so basically it turns into an arm, arms race there, then if you're a minor power, you are basically going to have to hope a great power represents you. Otherwise, you know, you're at their whims. And that's not even kidding, like, you do not want to let another power decide your fate. That's why I, that's why I always try and make myself a great power. I mean, it, aside from being, you know, you're the most powerful in the world, obviously. And then just there. I think I go for the other side of Borneo. Yeah. <clears throat> Wait, what? Oh, try and get a uh, guinea. Guinea more. Now, here's something interesting. I'm going for Digiba Digibushi. Uh, Digibushi? I can't even say it. Where it is? Eretria. You can see how much we can colonize, by the way. And how much of it is actually coastline. How much of it is inland. I still want to lock off the other ma other major powers, so I'm you know Piedmont. I don't mind expanding a bit. They're in our sphere. They're gonna they're our ally. They've been absolute badasses for us. I really don't mind if they get more power. I am worried that um, other major powers are going to get in the party. So you know, still lock off the coast. Portugal, I'm not entirely fussed about. I mean, it's no offense to Portugal at all. Uh, their secondary power, I think, at most, anyway. If they colonize anything, it's not going to be that much. I mean, they could link up their land. That's not a big deal for me, anyway. Um, we got tons of more money. And, yeah, we stopped because we're out colonial points. There we go, Piedmont's still expanding. I'm just going to contest them, I think. They have 192 colonial power. Also, I want you to just place your bets now. Who do you think is going to join this race? We've got friends. We've got Piedmont. No way, I'll pause the video if you can make your bets get written down. Make sure you're in your head, no. Make sure you're in your head, you know who you're going to place your bets on. Go yeah. Okay. And this is what you kind of do, by the way. You go around, as you settle places, you set up a new naval base, you move on. Naval base gives you 30, as well, we've gone over it, 30 colonial power. And that can, a free naval bases uh, can potentially give you more land. Um, four naval bases is the definite. It also gives you more navy. So you definitely do want to upgrade your naval bases as you go in. Once you're in land, all bets are off. It's, you know, just take land and hope you can get a lot. And lip the subs and the Sahara is a good place to go. Netherlands took Switzerland from us. You get. Stop taking Switzerland. He's ours! We've had him for this long! <sighs> I never learned, will you? Yeah, Paul and the you did your work too much. Um, there's no one actually trying for a massive thing. They're 12th in the world, already. I mean, we're at the colonial race, that's like, what? 30 years in? 25 years into the game. Now, nah, Netherlands will leave us alone. I want my miner. And unsurprisingly, Poland the Flames getting beaten. Hmm. No advice to culture society. Uh, sad thing is, I'm actually reading this, and now in hindsight, I probably should have gone with less militancy instead of trying to jack it up as high as possible. The Austrian Prussian Brothers War. Now, <laughs> I've, just, I've if you look, yeah, you went to uh, Krakow, by the way. Mr. Order, he's got a CB in Krakow. If you look, Austria has added humiliate to the to the Brothers War. The Brothers War is a CB that requires 100%. Yeah, there's something about that. <laughs> uh, that's not going to happen. Still, nationalism, imperialism—that's literally what's causing all of it. If they didn't have that, then they wouldn't have the Brothers War going on right now. I'm just looking for naval bases to upgrade. Hello. Nope. Oh yeah. Well. I don't really care if the navy is France. I mean, you've got Europe, you can... The natives, you're not going to have trouble with. And Britain, 
you might have trouble with the navy, but as soon as you break it, you're on the mainland, you can just walk over. There we go, loan repaid. So, at this point, it's... Yeah, I probably... I... Now, to be fair, I probably should have put taxes down. Apparently I do. What? I mean, half our population are struggling to get us anywhere, so, you know, I, I should have done. Just to give everyone what they need. Hindsight's 2020. You'll see, you'll see what I mean in a bit. Elections! Election season! Peru! Hello, Peru! Join us! You're friendly! And this is where all of the miners of South America come in. Oh god, the Russia wants rest person. I wish I could intervene. I wish. But we got a truce with Russia. It's a shame, really, because Poland and Lithuania was doing damn well apart from that. But we'll get Russia back. At some, well, I think when it comes around to the wars, we're going to lead and try and get a um, liberate country against Russia to re liberate the entirety of Poland and Lithuania. And that is going to be useful. I mean, you will see how big they can be. Not as big as Russia. You'll never be as big as Russia. <laughs> Hello, I had an efficiency up. Um, let's go with... I can't remember where I went near with here. On me. What did I go with? Ah, chemistry, I guess. I think I was looking for... Um, just something with more people. Oh wait, unless the philosophy is available. Yeah, I think more. I think I more research points is a good thing to get. I mean, that's another double research speed. Once the construction's done, we'll have tons of money. Just waiting for that to be done. We got Borneo. Well, we're half Borneo anyway. The other half's owned by my friends, the, the Dutch. Anyway, guys, there's like 25 odd seconds before past me comes back in and realizes. So I'm going to call this post commentary here. Um, sorry about this. I'm going to get back into the game in about 15 more seconds. I hope you enjoy this, folks, and I will see you next time. There's a need for post commentary. <laughs> Ciao. Um, so yeah, I decided to mute the mic accidentally. Don't know how long I spend. This might be a post commentary episode. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have to go that part. So, next time, let's play Victoria 2 as the French. We're going to do the race for Africa. Let's see how much of this we can claim. We're actually getting quite a few now, which is a good sign. I've been the Black House. You've been you. Join me again next time for more. And let's play Victoria 2 here in France. And go for watching, folks. I'll see you next time.